the more skillful you are in your search for happiness, the lighter you tread on this earth. Because you realize that a true happiness, to be true and lasting, has to be harmless. Something that doesn't take anything away from anyone else. Which means that it has to come from within. So that's what we do as we meditate. We're looking for a harmless happiness. This is a very important way of being kind to others. Sometimes meditation is attacked as being a selfish activity. You're just looking after yourself. But people who know how to look after themselves are less of a burden on other people. That's why this skill is so important. There's a passage where the Buddha says that right resolve, which is one of the factors of the path, finds its highest expression in doing right concentration. In other words, after reflecting on the fact that your quest for happiness is going to have to depend on your own actions. And you don't want to harm anybody else in the, in the course of that quest. So you think about the things that are harmful. Some of them are just outright doing violence to other people, having ill will for other people. And also being attached to sensual desires. Because as the Buddha once said, even if it rained gold coins, we wouldn't have enough for essential desires. If that's where you're looking for happiness, there's no end to it. And how many showers of gold coins have you seen? And how many showers would we need to satisfy every person and every animal on earth? There's no way that a true happiness can be found in that way. So you try to learn how to wean yourself away from sensual desires, and the best way to do that is to find a sense of pleasure within. This is why the Buddha taught right concentration. It's not just that you focus your mind, but you focus your mind in such a way that it gives rise to a sense of ease and a sense of rapture. In this way you satisfy your immediate need for pleasure. at the same time that you're developing clarity in the mind. Because when your pleasure depends on harming other beings, we tend to have these big blind spots around the harm that we're doing. We can think of all sorts of ways to justify the harm that happens to other beings or other people in the course of our quest for pleasure. And in doing so, we build up huge areas of ignorance in the mind. But when your pleasure depends on things that are causing no harm at all, you can be clearer about where there is harm in the world, where there is conflict. Because your happiness doesn't depend on that harm or conflict. So what you've got here is a happiness that's blameless and also very clear, an ideal happiness to form part of the path. So focus on the breath in a way that feels comfortable. Focusing on the breath is called directed thought, and then learning how to make it comfortable. This is evaluation. These are the two factors that help build concentration. The third is singleness in which you're really focused on the breath and try to stay with the breath and nothing else. So these are the three things you focus on. Notice how the breath feels in the different parts of the body. Here we're not talking just about the air coming in and out of the lungs, but also the, the whole energy flow, the movement of the body as the breath comes in, the breath goes out. Try to notice, do you tense up as you breathe in? Do you hold on to tension as you breathe out? Can you breathe in a way that doesn't build up tension? Can you breathe out in a way that's not holding on to tension? First you want to start out at one spot in the body where it's easy to get a sense of the breath coming in, the breath going out, or the movement of the body, 
as you breathe in, as you breathe out. And learn how to relate to that spot and whether you stay with it, but you're not clenching up around it. So there's a sense of openness and fullness right there at that spot. Fullness in the sense that the blood is allowed to flow naturally without being squeezed and diverted. And this is a skill. Because for most of us, when we concentrate on some part of the body, we tense it up in order to maintain some sensation that we can stick with. But here you want to maintain a sense of openness and stick with that. So learn how to stick with that sense so you can keep that sense of openness and fullness all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And then when you can maintain that, move to other parts of the body. You can do this systematically. You might start, say, at the, the navel or at the base of the throat or the back of the neck. If you're starting at the navel, go up the front of the body, then down the back out the legs, then from the back of the neck down the shoulders and out the arms. Or if you start at the back of the neck, you can go down the back first, out the legs, down the shoulders and out the arms, and then the front of the torso, taking the body section by section to see if there are any sections you tend to hold on to tension through the, through the out-breath or the in-breath and training yourself to breathe in such a way that there is no holding on. Things are allowed to flow smoothly. The breath flows smoothly. The blood flows smoothly. And there's a sense of ease all the way through the breathing process. Some people at this point begin to get a sense of floating. We'll try not to drift off. You can float, but stay in place. There's a sense of lightness and buoyancy, so keep that sense of lightness, but stay with the point where you are. And when you've learned to breathe in such a way that the whole body feels at ease throughout the in-breath and the out-breath in in and out-breath, then try to maintain that sense of awareness of the whole body. And let the pleasure radiate out through the body. And then just learn how to maintain that. Stick with it. If you find yourself losing focus when you open up your range of awareness for the whole body, go back to going through the body spot by spot, section by section. And then try it again. You may find yourself going back and forth like this for a while until you feel comfortable staying with the whole body. And even though there's a sense of ease and lightness, there's also what you might call a a solidity to your focus. In other words, it's steady. It doesn't get moved around easily. At this point, you want to maintain a sense of being focused primarily on one spot in the body, but aware of the whole body. It's like looking at a painting. Your eyes may focus on one spot in the painting, but you can see the whole painting, even though you're focused on one spot. And here you have it, right resolve. The intention to stick with the meditation. You're not harming anyone, you feel no ill will for anyone. You don't need to think about sensual pleasures. This is the embodiment of right resolve. And this ease and happiness forms the path. It's your nourishment on the path. In the text they talk about the different aspects of the path as being like different aspects of a fortress. Mindfulness is like the gatekeeper. Wisdom is like the smooth walls that nobody can climb up, cause danger. And right concentration is like the food you have stored away to keep yourself nourished. This way, as you develop skill in your pursuit of happiness, you find that you need less of things outside. Your hungers and addictions 
lose a lot of their their force or their sharpness. Because you've got a good, good alternative right here. This is how we tread lightly on the earth, by finding our happiness inside, a sense of buoyancy and ease inside. So we have less and less need for outside pleasures. So take the time and the energy that's needed to develop this skill, because it will serve you well throughout life.